Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 27 of this 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. Water fasting, I don't have much to share about that. It's kind of the same now. Um, my physical energy was a little lower today. Mental energy was great. I really like working a lot on the fast. I know some people are into just being a couch potato or taking it really easy, resting, meditating for the entire fast. And I would just be bored out of my mind if I did that. <laughs> um, Working is great because my mental clarity is really high and I'm getting a lot done, making good decisions, and just plowing through tons of work. You know, working eight to 12 hours a day is no problem at all at this point. I could probably go longer than 12 hours if I want, but Rochelle wants me to spend some time with her in the evenings. Um, it, you know, it, it's, I think, much easier to just be occupied with work because when I'm working, I'm focusing on something other than food. So if I was just lying on the couch all the time or watching TV and you watch TV shows and then you're just like constantly exposed to people eating food on, in, you know, where they have meals and so many different movies and things like that, it, to me, that just makes it harder. Um, when I can focus on something non-food related and just work, uh, it's great. It's like the hours go flying by and I get a lot done, and so that's, to me, a good way to fast. Your mileage may vary if you do this you know, type of experience. Um, I know different people have very different experiences with fasting. I'm very happy with how this one is going. It's way easier than I expected. The first three days were the hardest. Um, you know, seven days, like in, still a little bit wonky with the energy. But after about the first week, maybe eight or nine days, then my energy stabilized and it's been pretty smooth sailing since then. So that's been good to see. The rash I had on my chest that I start, started coming in several days ago is gradually clearing up, so that's nice. Um, and otherwise, still smooth sailing. Today's topic is a pretty basic one, but it's one that I think trips up a lot of people. And this, uh, it's this idea of um, you know, the way you spend money being really cheap about it and trying to go for the lowest price possible in all ways and getting the very best bargain you can versus going for quality. And I think the first stems from a scarcity mindset and the second is more aligned with an abundance mindset. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to overspend or be absolutely lavish in your expenses. I'm not that kind of person. What I am suggesting is that if you want to shift from a scarcity mindset over to an abundance mindset, you want to pay some attention to your focus on quality over cheapness when you make purchases. Um, you want to move into a sense of deserving the best quality that you can afford. And you can do that at any level of income. It's really just a mindset shift. Instead of always going for the cheapest option, start thinking about what is the option you really desire and deserve? What is the best quality option for you? And then think about how you can make that possible. How can you earn it? How can you afford it? Uh, that's something I started doing even when I was you know, really broke and um, it, it gradually helped to shift my mindset because when you start favoring quality over cheapness, you know, over like the least expense, um, it changes your relationship to money. It changes your relationship to all the objects in your life. Your life becomes filled with better quality items that you really love. And that, you know, when, when you surround yourself with quality items that you really love, it makes a difference. It changes your sense of self. It changes your, you know, your feeling of self-esteem. Um, and I understand that initially this can feel very uncomfortable to do that because you're probably mired in one particular mindset and to upgrade to a higher standard of quality is a challenge. And by quality, I mean something that matters to you. So there's, you know, there, there may be many areas of life or different types of products or services where quality just doesn't mean that much to you. Like it's not a big deal. For instance, uh, years ago, I got into um, I think back in 2009, I did a deep dive into exploring fashion. And, you know, I spent some money buying like expensive jeans and like a $200 shirt or two or three. And then I realized after a while, I really just don't care. That's not like how I define quality. To me, I like comfortable clothing. <laughs> so like this is like a $12 t-shirt, you know, it's totally fine for me. That satisfies my definition of quality. Um, 
and you know some people like poke fun at me for getting into fashion years ago and then not even caring about it but I realized I just don't care you know it's like it's not aligned with my values and so what's quality me is not necessarily quality of someone else um, I you know expensive clothing just doesn't impress me for my car I drive a 2010 Hyundai Sonata it was less than twenty thousand dollars I bought it brand new right from the dealer and um, you know it's it's fine it's not a luxury car it's was not that expensive I paid cash for it you know and it's it's been driving well ever since it's never broken down so for me quality is like a reliable car that I like and the, the main reason I bought that car is that when Aaron and I separated uh, we only had one vehicle and she uh, took that vehicle which I was fine with um, and I I got a rental car for a while while trying to figure out, you know, um, you know, we were trying to figure out various aspects of the divorce. So I just got a rental car and I kept uh, getting a monthly rental. And it just so happened the car I rented was a Hyundai Sonata and I got so comfortable with it. I just said, you know what? I really like this car. So I went and bought one. Um, and that, to me, that was, that was a, a version of quality. In fact, when I went to buy the car, I was looking at the newer model, the 2011 model, but it had like this leather stuff uh, wrapped around some parts of the interior, like the the gear shift, and I don't do leather, <laughs> so I I actually bought the year earlier model, um, and to me that you know which I, it had no leather in it, so to me that was like, you know my my standard of quality. Um, I could afford to buy a sports car, but I just don't care. <laughs> um, so the, so the you know the idea here is like you want to spend on really good quality in the way it matters to you. Um, this couch, for instance, you know, this couch I'm sitting on, it was $3,000 new. I love this couch. To me, it's awesome because it's so like fluffy and soft and it's awesome for cuddling. I've cuddled so many different people on this couch. Um, it's, um, you know, to me, that's, that's quality in a couch. You might want something more elegant. I want like super comfy, super cozy. Um, so again, it's a very personal standard you're setting here. You know, in some areas, I re you know my my al alignment with quality is probably not like most people's. In other areas, my standards are probably higher. For instance, whenever I buy a new computer, um, I you know I I was a PC guy for decades, and then I think it was maybe around 2009 or so I switched to Apple stuff. And I really liked the Apple stuff. It took, it took me a while to get used to it. But once I got into their e ecosystem, then I just got like everything Apple. You know, like it started with an iPod that kind of introduced me to it. Um, but then, um, I, you know, I got my first MacBook and then iPhone and iPad. And, you know, now I have all those things. Um, and so when I go buy something new, like a new MacBook Pro or a new iPhone, I just go to Apple's website um, or into their store and like if I'm going on their website and I customize it I just get the highest end model and I just check the bottom box for everything going down so just get the most expensive version so the most the fastest CPU they have the best you know the most RAM everything upgraded uh, to the max and then I just buy that and then those computers I'll keep for like you know three four years or so maybe before I upgrade um, I have, I've had my current model since is late 2013 and it still runs great and it's, and you know, I don't have any issues with it. So I haven't even upgraded, even though there's newer ones out. Um, and it's not the hassle of getting a new one or the cost. It's just like the hassle of, you know, just getting used to a new computer and transferring everything over and, and you get into your comfort zone. You know, it's like you, you like what you like and if it's working well, there's no need to just overspend for the sake of overspending. Um, this is, you know, again, um, a really personal thing. You know, you, I want you to think a little bit about what, what does quality mean to you? What in your life uh, do you feel is like cheap or crap? Uh, when you when you go the cheap route, you often get things that aren't very durable. They wear out fast. They frustrate you. They may be more complicated than necessary. Like one one form of quality is simplicity. Um, another thing to think about is if you buy products or services, what kind of support do you get for them? 
Uh, for me, this is super important with web hosting. To me, quality web hosting, I've got to have good support. I would never ever host with an, um, uh, you know, certain companies like like Bluehost. You know, terrible. If you read the reviews online, they're just like tons of one star reviews and stuff. Um, I host with a company called SiteGround, which is a European company, and they're known for really good customer service. And so um, I switched to them last year, and I've been very happy with them. Their, their tech support is just amazing for what you pay. And I pay a little bit more than um, I could with a cheaper account, but I need that, that form of quality, that reliability, where there's people I can count on to help you know, with any issues. Um, that's really important because my business relies on it. So... You know, to me, that's a really important standard for quality in that one area. With other things, though, I may not care about the service or support. It may not matter to me that much. Um, so, you know, this is, again, an area where you want to try to clarify what your definition of quality is. And this is something you can start applying right away with the simplest things. Take, for instance, the pen you use, okay? Do you feel like this is an awesome pen? Is this a pen you like? Um, you know, when I realized, you know, I was using crappy pens sometimes, just these lame ass ballpoint pens I didn't like that much. Uh, the ink would dry out or whatever, or they wouldn't write that well. And I thought, let me go look for a really good pen. And I just, you know, I just found some, actually at Costco that I really like, some gel pens, and I bought a bunch of those. And I've been using them for years. And, and the thing is, is like every time I use those pens, it's a reminder to myself that I deserve quality, that, um, that I'm a professional. In, in fact, your professional tools in general that you use, what do you use each day? That is especially a good place to raise your standards of quality and not go for the cheap crap. Uh, if, you, you know, if you can't afford the best quality new, see if you can get it used. But um, I encourage you to push your comfort zone edges a bit here. Don't just like rest on your laurels and stay with the same standards. Throughout your life, consider continuing to upgrade your standards of quality. You know, what, what matters to you in that area? Um, what, what would you feel would be some kind of upgrade that would change your relationship to the things in your life? Ultimately, you want the things in your life to be things that you appreciate. My house isn't full of what I think of as too much stuff for, this, for the size of the house. Um, in fact, there's some areas that are largely empty because I don't feel like I want to fill them with stuff that doesn't matter to me. But in the places I do fill, I like to have really good quality, uh, such as my home office. I have a desk with a, a motor built into it. It's called a geek desk, and it can go up and down, so I can use it in standing mode or in sitting mode. And to me, that's the best of both worlds because I was considering getting a standing desk and I read reviews and thought people don't like standing all the time and the sitting is all the time isn't so great. So I can actually just push a button and in about 20 seconds, it'll raise from one height to another. And I can even have presets to set it to different heights. Uh, so to me, that's a version of you know, quality solution because it simplifies it. I don't need a sitting desk and a standing desk. I can just push a button and switch between modes. Uh, several months ago, I got a new office chair and I spent like a thousand dollars on it. And that was like another area where I was thinking about upgrading. Um, I've been using one of those cheap Office Depot hundred dollar specials for years and it was getting worn out. And I was noticing I was having some posture problems and things like that. And I thought, huh, this is like, this is kind of a foolish decision. I'm using this cheap ass chair. I could easily get a better one. Why don't I go and research and find like one of the really best chairs out there? So I did a bunch of research and got like, you know, um, I got a, a chair from a company called Steelcase. Uh, the Aeron chairs are really popular too. So, uh, the Herman Miller ones in general, those, that's another popular line of chairs. So, um, so, you know, if you're working at your desk a lot, like I do, you might think, hmm, maybe I should invest in a really good chair. How much could that pay off in you know, good posture? And then every time you go into your office, you see your chair and you think, wow, I'm a pro. I deserve the best. And that sends a message to yourself. And every little one of those messages you said, you, know, you send to yourself, the technology you use, the desk you use, the chair you use, the pens you use, 
It all sends signals to your brain and basically tells you what kind of person you see yourself as. Try this. Walk into your workspace and just say, you know, like pretend you're a stranger walking in and this is somebody else's workspace. Whether it's at home or some office or you've got a travel workspace you take with you and you just set it up on the go, just look at it. Look at the pieces of it, the elements of it, and ask yourself, uh, you know, if I didn't know this person, what would I conclude about them? What kind of person would have this workspace? What kind of person would have this computer, this phone, this chair, this desk, uh, and, and you know, this pen, this notebook, and so on? And see what it says to you, because that's what it is saying to you. That's what it's programming you to, um, to see yourself as. That's the kind of self-image that you're creating. You can also do this with your kitchen. So if you've been using cheap ass kitchen stuff and it's all old and decrepit, you might, you might consider upgrading and you can take the old stuff and donate it. Um, you know, I'm not encouraging you to overspend or go crazy here, but I've definitely noticed that as I've gone from a scarcity mindset to abundance mindset over a period of many years, it's not like something you flip immediately. The, the more I favor quality, the more it really helps me align with this whole abundance idea. And the more um, you know, I see other things changing in my life, like my income going up, it, cha it changes my self-image. It, it makes me feel like I deserve better. And when I buy cheap craft, I end up just getting frustrated and I end up like junking it anyway because it doesn't work as well, it breaks down quickly, um, or I just don't use it because I don't feel good about it. So, you know, give this idea some thought and think about different areas of your life. And you can just look around visually in, in places where you work and live and ask yourself, you know, what kind of person would have this stuff? And if you don't love it, you know, start getting rid of some of the junk that you feel is low quality or that's sending you a bad message. There's this idea in feng shui that even if you have like a chipped coffee cup, you should replace it or repair it because... It's a message to yourself that you don't deserve the best, that you have to deal with something broken, that you don't deserve good quality. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting standard to consider. I do think it's actually better to have less stuff but higher quality stuff. So you could often just junk or you know, donate, sell, um, get rid of all the, the cheap stuff that you never use, that you don't appreciate, and just replace it with you know, half as many items or fewer of things that you really appreciate that raise your standard for quality. So, it, it, you know, again, this is an area where quality is much more important than quantity, quantity because it's the quality of these different objects, these possessions, these experiences, these services that send you a message. And, you know, I just mentioned services too. So this is another area where you can invest in quality. Like when you take a trip or go on a vacation, do you always go for the cheapest option or do you go for what actually matters to you? So there's so many ways you can apply this idea. Uh, you know, you can apply it to your food. Do you, eat, do you um, buy the best quality food you can find? Um, I, you know, I favor organic food, and I favor food without tons of ingredients I can't even understand. Um, I like foods that are close to nature, and to me, that's quality. Uh, to you, it might be something else. But, uh, you know, clarify you, what quality means to you and keep thinking about upgrades. You know, this is an ongoing process. Keep thinking about how to shed the things that no longer feel in alignment with your path to abundance and keep inviting new things that do align with that path. And you'll find it's a little uncomfortable at first. You know, it might feel like you're spending too much money on a certain thing and that's okay. It's good to get used to that stretching of your comfort zone and get used to those feelings. Um, it's just an important part of your path of growth. So, you know, give this some thought. Think about some things you can upgrade right away or, or change, you know, or replace. It's not that difficult to do if you think about it consciously. I'll see you tomorrow.